DS18B20 Digital One Wire Waterproof Probe. This is the kind of probe I ended up buying. Not the same auction, but it's the DS18B20 Waterproof Temperature Control Thermal Sensor. So you've got three wires here. VCC, ground, and one wire data, and supposedly a waterproof enclosure here. It can run from 3 to 5.5 volts, and it can measure minus 55 Celsius to plus 125 Celsius. Yellow on this probe is the data line, and it's got a 100 centimeter long cable. Some probes similar to this might actually have four wires where maybe the data one is white. And maybe there's another one that's a shield ground sort of thing, but this one's just got the pure power and data. And here's how I hooked it up, more or less. I've got the Arduino Uno giving 5 volts here to the breadboard, and I'm powering this temperature sensor as well as the OLED from it. The OLED has I squared C and pull ups, and the one wire thermometer has its pull up and the data is going to pin 2. Each one of these parts that are manufactured have their own unique 64-bit serial code, and that allows you to just throw a whole bunch of these on the same one-wire bus. And you can differentiate which one you're talking to, kind of like having their own address. You can configure the sensor to have a resolution for the digital conversion of 9, 10, 11, or 12 bits, and what that will give you is this temperature measuring resolution. If you put it to 9 bits, you only get to see changes by half a degree Celsius, or you can change it to a 10-bit resolution and you get 0.25 degree Celsius resolution, etc. So you can get it down to 0 0.0625 degree Celsius resolution if you use 12 bits. I want to be able to see increments of around 0.1 degrees Celsius, so I'm going to probably set it at 11 bits. And this can be powered by the data line itself, so you don't even necessarily need to give it your own separate supply, but you kind of still are giving it its own supply, just not up to the sensor itself, just down further toward the control circuit. You need some sort of a way to provide more current on this data bus so that power can be leached from it and in the end, for my application on the bench, I'm not worried about saving an extra wire so I can only have two ground and data with phantom power. I don't mind sending three discrete wires, so this also adds some code complexity. You have to turn on this pull-up at certain times. But you can't just leave it like that because you're kind of shorting the data line to VCC, right? So you also actually need an extra GPIO in this case too. So there's a big trade-off, more complexity. I'm just doing this. Give it a pull-up, give it 5 volts, and we're done. So out of this unique 64-bit serial code that every unit has, part of it, the least significant 8 bits, contain a family code of 28 hex, which means it is a DS18B20 device. Because you can have different one-wire devices of different styles on the bus, so when you read in all the codes for whatever's on the bus, if you get one with 28 hex at the least significant 8 bits, it means it's one of these sensors. To use this sensor, we need a one-wire library installed to handle talking over this, just like the wire library is used for I2C, and that can be installed from the Arduino Library Manager. Likewise, to use these DS, Dallas Semiconductor or Maxim, sensors, you install the Dallas Temperature Library, which you can also do from the Arduino Library Manager. There's a pull-up 4.7K on the data. I have the 128 by 64 OLED with I squared C and pull-ups for that. And I'm powering this breadboard and everything on it from 5 volts and ground from the Arduino Uno. On digital input 2, I'm connecting the one wire data line with the pull-up on it. And I'm reporting the temperature in degrees Celsius and Fahrenheit. When the one wire and Dallas temperature libraries are installed, there's going to be different example programs they have. So I've looked at those and come up with something that works for me to test it with an OLED. 
So I'm basically displaying the temperature in degrees Celsius and Fahrenheit both in the serial monitor and in the OLED display. So I include the one wire and Dallas temperature, obviously, and then I include the SSD1306 OLED library, and I need wire for the I2C. I'm using digital input 2 for the one wire. This OLED reset 4, I'm not sure, I think that's for SPI if you're using this Adafruit library, but we're using I2C, so we, we define this because I think it gives an error if we don't have it. This Dallas temperature library has some custom stuff in there, so to hold the thermometer address of each thing on the one wire bus, they have this custom data structure called device address, which is an eight element array of eight bits, giving you 64 bits that you can hold in this array. That stores the address of my probe. Then of course we get the OLED initialized, and here's why we need the OLED reset. We have to pass something in here, even though we're not even using this. And similarly, we initialize the one wire bus with our one wire pin. And now we're going to have something called display when we want to talk to the OLED. And we have something called one wire created, where it's a communication interface with the temperature probe. And that interface gets used by the Dallas temperature library. And we create something called temp sensor that we can talk to and configure the probe with and read the temperature from. So we set up a serial monitor as usual. We initialize our OLED display and clear it. Up in our serial monitor, we write a little header and we try to find our device on the bus. Since I'm doing a custom program here just for the one sensor, I'm only going to look for one and set it up. If nothing's plugged in, it will tell me nothing's plugged in, but it will still run the rest of the program. I guess it'll just give you default values. It won't be a true temperature. Otherwise, if we do find our device, it'll print out in the serial monitor what the address is. So over here, locating devices, we found a device and the datasheet said the least significant 8 bits are supposed to be 28 hex to indicate it's a DS18B20 part. Now, I don't know how this array of address bits is configured, but it's printing it out in the most significant bit position. But whatever, it's there. Flip it around if we need to. And I set the temperature resolution to 11 so I can get the amount of decimal precision I want. And then... We just keep looping, reading the temperature out of the probe and displaying it on both the OLED and the serial monitor in two different functions. And wait half a second because we don't need it to update too fast and keep going. That's the program. Here it is showing degrees Celsius and Fahrenheit on the serial monitor. Now I'll let it keep scrolling and it'll do the same down on the OLED. So in our main loop, temp sensor is that instance we created on the one wire bus to go use the Dallas temperature interface. And that's where we make our requests for configuring it or reading the temperature. For example, we initialize it by saying temp sensor begin. So we're actually using this Dallas library. And then we get the address out of it by running a get address routine down in this library through our temp sensor interface we created, etc. And now we use this to request temperature. And it gives it in degrees Celsius by default. If we want Fahrenheit, we have to convert it. So it'll go down into the Dallas library, get the temperature in degrees Celsius of the device on this address, and pass that into the function here to display the temperature. This temperature that comes out in degrees Celsius is a float variable type, and it ends up having two decimal places on it, so I'm showing that directly in the serial monitor. So you can see 23.00, that's just what gets printed out. But on the OLED, I don't care to have it to two decimal places, but I do want one decimal place. So when I go display print, and I say temperature reading is what I want to display, I do comma one and that rounds the float down to one decimal place. So we configure our display for text size two, we throw the cursor up at the top left and write temp, 
and then we show it in degrees Celsius as well as Fahrenheit. The Dallas library has a to Fahrenheit function, so you just convert degrees C to Fahrenheit using the Dallas library, and then actually go and update the OLED display with all this. Okay, so to do a bit of a test with a camera that doesn't want to focus, I have the digital probe and a thermocouple. Thermocouple is showing 23.9, and I might have to zoom in. We're getting 23.9 as well on the OLED for the digital sensor. And here I have ice water and almost boiling water. What happens when we go into the cold water? Ooh, we dropped right away down to 6 degrees on the thermocouple. 9, 8 on the OLED. Yeah, we're catching up. 5 degrees. Zoom back out. Yep, 5 something on the thermocouple. 4.65. You know, this is obviously not solid frozen, it's liquid, so it's close to zero, you know, for ice water. We're doing good. So 4.8 on the thermocouple, 4.5, 3 something on the OLED. So now let's kind of let this stuff warm up again before we totally plunge it into this boiling water, or almost boiling. So we're up to about 28 degrees on both of these. How do things go when it gets a bit warm? And we start jumping. We're going up close to 70 Celsius on the thermocouple, and we're catching up on the digital probe, 64 degrees, 64 and a half degrees. Zoom back out, and we're at 67 degrees on the thermocouple. So yeah, they're both in agreement. And I would call that a success. So with these probes now just sitting idle at room temperature, and they try to adjust themselves, I do notice the thermocouple responds a lot quicker. It's already down toward what room temperature right now is. And the OLED is still up there. Now it's 35 degrees. But then again, one difference is the thermocouple is just out in the open, fully exposed, and the digital sensor is inside this other enclosure. There may be heat retention going on and stuff like that. So, so when these have had time to reach equilibrium with their environments respectively, everything's okay. And again, if you're going to use these for anything one way or the other, you're going to want to characterize and figure out exactly what their limitations and what your expectations need to be to make it work for what you're doing. Either way, now we know how easy it can be to get up and running with one of these one-wire devices.